You know, I, I've just got to say, I love when my customers come up with the coolest ideas. Uh, I have a customer right now, I'm working on two rods. They're going to be, well, as identical as I can make them, being that they're custom. You can't really make anything identical, I don't believe. But anyway, when she came in to design her rods, she saw two of the techniques that I've come up with over time. One of them is where I put the um, tester's paint mixed in with the metallic um, metallic tester pa tester's paint mixed in with uh, pigments, the powder pigments. And I just kind of stir it around. It breaks up and it looks like really cool. And then she saw the artwork that I had done where I put like a sunset uh, marbling background with the silhouettes on top. And she, I was thinking she was going to pick one or the other, but she says, well, what if you put like the sunset uh, marbling with some the silhouette background and she picked out what she kind of wanted me to put on it and like on either end of it put black marbling with the gold testers to kind of like border the sunset and I'm like you know that is a pretty darn cool idea so that's what I'm gonna do so what I had to do was I laid down the section where I was gonna um where I'm putting the uh, gold and gold testers paint and over the black pigment, but I got to keep it separated and, and I got to do it separately. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, the sunset background, sunset color marbling background, and I laid out my thread because I kind of like using the thread when I'm trying to slow things, uh, slow the movement of the marbling down. And what I, I y'all, I don't like this pack bait thread. I really don't. I mean, black is not really black. I mean, it is black, but this thread is like stretchy. So when you lay it down, it's got, I don't know, it, the color changes, so it doesn't like stay solid black all the way across. But my husband had bought a few spools of this years ago, and I'm like, what am I ever going to do with that stuff? So it finally dawned on me, use it when you do your background marbling or when you do your marbling, because if you're going to lay a section, it doesn't matter what it looks like because the marbling's going to cover it up, and it's going to serve a purpose of keeping your your pigments from moving around just like you want and nobody's gonna see it and it's being used so that's what I'm doing but anyway um like I said I'm doing two rods I'll come back after each section and show you what I did and this is going to be a several step process so y'all stick with me let's get into it and on to the next part okay so I got my sunset pigments laid out and I wanted to show y'all something my little pencil torch here and I want to show you what happens when I uh, just kind of go over this really really lightly really really carefully you don't want to get too close and you don't want to get it too hot but it it blends it in which I'll probably have to go back because all it basically is doing is heating it up and it just kind of lets it flow into each other and smooths it out and makes it look more like paint and it gives it a nice cool effect so let me get this out of the way and I'll go back to now what I did was I laid my uh, my sunset 
color kind of background for my um, silhouette that I'm going to do. And here and here is where that gold is going to, the black and gold is going to be with the textures paint and the black pigment. But I have to take this tape right here. It's super, super thin tape. And I have to go right on the edge of each side. And I'm going to, uh, after this is all dry, because I got to leave a spot for some trim bands. And then from the other side of the tape, when it's there, over is going to be that black pigment with the gold testers. So that's it for this step. And I showed you that neat little nifty little trick with a pencil torch. And... Y'all stay tuned for the next step. Okay, I'm back to show you what I did with these, the border on each end of the sun set or sunrise little section here. I took black pigment. I used the CRB black pigment, mixed it with some epoxy, and I did a little section here and a little section here. I didn't want to put a whole lot, but I didn't want to put a whole little either because I want to give it just enough for the, um, my gold testers paint just enough to move around in. So after I got my, um, and I did a, another little section in front of um, the real seat, and I'll show you that in just a second. But then I took my gold testers paint and I dotted real lightly because you don't want to put too much because when you put it on the gold pigment i mean when you put the gold pigment on the black marbling little area it'll spread out so you, you kind of want to be careful with it because you can really after you play with it a while you'll learn how much you can put and how much you you shouldn't you know and it all depends also on how much you want on there i i've done a video prior to this on how i i did this um, whole testers paint with the marbling pigment. Y'all need to go back and check that out. And it honestly, it was actually an accident because I was going for something else. I was wanting some gold to just kind of streak through and it didn't do that. It just kind of blobbed up and got a little crusty and I'm like, well, what, what am I going to do with this? So I took a pen, uh, toothpick and I just started swirling it around. It started breaking up and I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool. So, I, actually, I came across that technique on an accident, but I'm going to call it mine, so I created it on an accident, but anyway. Um, so, I'm going to let this turn a little bit because I want to keep that one section with the gold flex from the, um, the little marbling sunset background that I'm going to put a silhouette on top of. And I use those small little pieces of tape you can see, and I'm gonna, here in maybe about 30 minutes, I'll peel those off. Because I mean, it, it should be pretty much done moving around too much by then. And, uh, and I put those little pieces of tape there to like keep my little spots so I can do the trim bands on either side. Let me see if I can go down here without shutting myself off and show you this other section I did in front of the wheel seat. And as it turns, that's another thing I may or may not have mentioned, I can't remember. Um, when you first take it and you dot it on your gold um, tester's paint on top and you kind of 
move it around with your toothpick and just kind of break it up with your toothpick. I mean, wait till it like looks like it's kind of cracking and then you can start moving it around. But as it turns, they start joining back together in spots, which really gives it that neat fleck, gold fleck looking, uh, looking look, if you want to call it that way. But anyway, so that's so much for this. Or that's about it for this little section. When I get back to where I'm putting on my trim bands and I have added my silhouette on it, I'll um, let y'all take a look. So y'all stay tuned. Don't run off and leave me yet. Okay, the rods are all done. I hope this video was helpful. The uh, decals and the trim bands have all been put on. And you guys, don't forget to subscribe. Keep following us and enjoy the rest of these pictures. Take care. God bless. Tight lines.